I'm Matt Hall of K-State Online, standing out in front of Bill Snyder Family Stadium here in Manhattan, Kansas. K-State recently wrapped up another fall camp practice here on Tuesday. We had a chance to talk with four different offensive coaches. We'll lead you off with quarterback coach Colin Klein, who tells us true freshman Chris Heron may have a better chance at helping at receiver this year than at quarterback. Chris has been, uh, the last few days, been more at receiver. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're holding that very loosely. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, we don't want to get him caught totally in the middle of trying to do so much that he doesn't get a true chance of, of uh, you know, being able to master the craft of one position. Um, not being in that top two quarterback race, you know, immediately, um, you know, has kind of pushed that more to probably his initial impact this season will probably be at receiver. So giving him a little bit more opportunity to grow and, you know, in, on that side of it. But um, trust me, there's not a there's not a coach that's fighting to keep him in his position room more than me. I can promise you that. <laughs> so Chris Heron is one true freshman working at wide receiver. There are two more on campus and Joshua Youngblood and Keenan Garber. We asked wide receivers coach Jason Ray to speak about both those young athletes for the Wildcats this season. Josh is doing well, uh, you know, as it's been noted, you know, he's a guy that uh, coach has been high on. We've all been high on him just as far as character, his pedigree, you know, coming from Tampa and, and some of the things that he brings to the table uh, from an explosiveness standpoint. But he's a kid, he's still a true freshman. He's still learning. Uh, and so, you know, ultimately, as I look at that entire group, those guys still have to continue to get better uh, fundamentally and in their technique. And, uh, and Josh is one of the same, those kids that he has to do those things. And, but he'll give you effort. You know, he's going to give great effort. And now it's just tightening up the details. What do you envision as the best case scenario for him in year one? Uh, year one, I mean, I think with the redshirt rule, year one, best case scenario is for him to get on the field and, 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 and basically kind of get some game reps and then kind of see where as he progresses, you know, after, you know, a game or two here or there, see how he fits, see how he actually works in a normal weekly schedule in, during the season. You know, right now, this is like camp. This is like NFL camp here. So there is no classes. There are no other distractions. So come fall, you know, there's going to be new new distractions. You know, there's going to be a lot more people on campus. There's going to be uh, classes to go to. The, the schedule changes. So ultimately, I think once we kind of figure out where guys fit and, uh, you know, athletically and once they learn our system, then you kind of start talking about, is this guy ready, you know, for the big time? Uh, athletically, he can do the, those things. But uh, once you get a full season schedule, you know, sometimes those kids may taper off or sometimes they rise to the occasion. And I expect him to rise to the occasion just because of the type of kid he is. One more, guys. Is Keenan another guy you'd like to utilize in that way, be able to get him on the field with the four-game cushion? You'd like to. You know, you'd like to find out if a kid can do something for you, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a certain game. But in those discussions, you know, we'll all have those as, as a full staff, obviously. And again, like I said, I think most of the time those conversations start with special teams. If a kid can go down and do something for us and uh, Keenan's still working. And, uh, you know, I think ultimately, you know, that, that whole group will continue to work and, and, and work on the things that we need to get better at. After Jason Ray will take you to the running back spot where running back coach Brian Anderson says his group is still working as a committee more than one individual. Well, I think we're going to be by committee right okay. now and early and and because uh, they all have good skill set and we can do a lot of different things with them. So I'm not worried about, you know, who's going to be the starter game one, who's going to be the starter game three. I'm not worried about that right now. We just got to continue to get them better as a whole group and uh, continue to push their minds, you know, because that, that's the biggest key right now is making sure football IQ is good. And so so now we can use them all in different spots. The offensive line blocking for those running backs has stayed healthy this fall, according to offensive line coach Connor Riley. But he says his unit still has position battles to be played out. We're still identifying uh, um, a, a position or two. And we have a couple guys competing for that position, um, and actually more than one. And if you look back at how I prepare the offensive line, there's a few guys who are going to have to play multiple positions. You know, we talk about putting guys in challenging situations. We talk often about um, putting them in uncomfortable situations because you want to try to create an uncomfortable situation out there today so they can handle it come Saturday afternoon. So guys are bouncing around a little bit, and I'd say there's there's two or three guys who are competing still for that for that one position left. That wraps it up for us today after practice here at K-State Online. We'll be back this coming Thursday with more coaches and players. Thanks to Grant Flanders behind the camera. I'm Matt Hall. Tell your friends.